Hello and welcome to another episode of Let's Develop with Maven. Today I'm going to talk about build processes. This is going to be somewhat of a theoretic episode, but I think it's really important for you to grasp the concept of build processes in Maven in order to work with it. So to start, let's have a look at what a build process actually is. So usually what you want to do is, of course, build the project itself. And then you might want to do something like testing, and you might want to package the project you just built, and in the end you probably want to deploy it. Let's have a look at the first, the build phase, in a little more detail. So what I'd say you might want to do in a, in a typical build process is at first like set up the environment, configure some paths or whatever you need to do, then move some files into place like source files or resource files, maybe uh, process some files like language files, fill in some, some variables or whatever, um, set the, the build environment variables like the build version, because you want every build to have a unique version in the end, then you uh, have to resolve dependencies, uh, move them somewhere so your build can actually access them. You have to compile your actually code, maybe even test code with the, all the dependencies and all the, uh, all the resource files uh, you resolved before. Um, then you might want to generate documentation you might want to instrument the code you just compiled. For example, uh, use aspects that need to be weaved in into the bytecode after compilation. And of course, in the end, you want to move all the results you just created into an output folder. So this is really a lot of steps you have to think of. And it's probably the same for the test, the package, and the deploy phase. There's a lot of things to do, and more importantly, there's a lot of things you can miss. So if you want to manage all these build process steps manually, it's really easy to get lost. And this is actually a point where Maven comes to the rescue. In Maven, the concept of build processes is mapped to life cycles. Let's look at how the Maven life cycle actually looks like when you build, for example, a project with a packaging type jar. First thing Maven is going to do is it's going to validate your POM XML file, see if everything's right, if everything's uh, set up and uh, the file is just valid. Then it's going to initialize your build environment like creating the output folder, which is the target folder in your uh, project group by default. And it's going to check a couple of other things on the system if everything's right and you're ready for the build. Next there comes uh, something I marked as one phase here which is actually four separate phases to generate sources, process sources, generate resources and process resources. The idea is that for example you can generate sources of model classes or generate resource files um, like images or language files and then post-process what you just uh, created in a separate step. After the source and resource generation there comes the compile phase in which you actually translate the, the class files and the process classes where you would weave in for example aspects. And then actually there comes uh, the same phases only for the test resources and sources. So uh, you might remember that in Maven, the actual project sources and the test sources are strictly separated. So in the build process, you have uh, also duplication of this generation and compilation phases, uh, one time for the normal sources and resources and one time for the test sources and resources to keep everything cleanly separated. After you did all the compilation in the build lifecycle, um, there comes the actual test phase. This is where the tests are executed. And after that, you're actually ready to package your product. So after the test successfully executed, you can prepare the packaging, like move files into place, extract dependencies. You might want to repackage your stuff 
and then of course do the packaging itself get everything you want all your resources all your class files together and put them into one jar file after that there comes the integration test phases integration tests are separated into three phases which is a pre or setup phase uh, the test phase itself and a post phase so you can for example in the pre phase fire up a server in the integration test phase execute the, the actual tests and the post phase uh, tear down the server again after the integration test phase there comes a verification phase which is actually meant to uh, verify that all of the build before has gone right so at this point everything should be done everything should be ready everything should be okay for your build and you're actually ready to share the result with other projects as soon as the verify phase succeeds. Respectively, the next phase is the installation phase, which will by default move your just created artifacts into your local Maven repository. You might remember that the local Maven repository is uh, the local cache where Maven also puts all the dependencies it downloads from other Maven repositories, and this means as soon as you installed your artifact into your local Maven repository, it's available for other Maven builds on your local machine. And finally, to take it one step further, there's the deploy phase that allows you to actually move your Maven artifacts to a local or a remote Maven repository as you wish, which corresponds to actually publishing your build artifacts. This as a whole is referred to as the Maven default lifecycle. One thing you have to consider here is all these phases by themselves do nothing. In order to make the build actually do something, you need to bind plugins or steps of plugins that are called goals in Maven to the lifecycle phases. Let's have a look at how this might look like. For example, in the compile phase, there's a default binding to the Maven compiler plugin. So in the compile phase of a project of packaging type jar, the compile goal will be executed, which will compile all the class files in your uh, source main Java folder. Then in the test compile phase, there's a binding again to the Maven compiler plugin but this time to the test compile goal, which will compile all the class files from your source test Java folder. Then in the test phase, for example, there's a binding to the test goal of the Maven Surefire plugin, which can handle test execution and puts the test reports, in most cases JUnit reports, in your output folder. In the packaging step, then there's uh, for a jar project, the Maven jar plugin with a jar goal that is able to take all the things you created uh, throughout the previous steps and bundle them together in a jar file. If you would have another packaging type than jar, for example, war or AJB, then uh, there would be a respective default binding to the Maven war plugin or the Maven AJB plugin uh, that can handle the respective packaging types. And of course what makes uh, Maven really powerful is that there's not only the default bindings that are uh, brought to you by the default configuration, but you can configure your own plugin uh, executions in the lifecycle phases, like for example bind the Copertura Maven plugin with its goal Copertura to the verify phase which will handle a code coverage measurement for you. Enough of the theory for now. Uh, let's look at how this actually looks like in practice. If I execute Maven Verify, for example, Maven will go through all the lifecycle phases up until and including, of course, the verification phase. So you can see uh, it will do the validation first, scanning for projects, it will then do the initialization to set the build up and actually get started. And then you see the plugin executions, like first the Maven resources plugin processing the resources, then the Maven compiler plugin compiling the code, then the resources plugin again 
processing the test resources, the compiler plugin again, compiling the test classes, and then you see the Maven Surefire plugin in the test phase executing the tests. You can see the test results here in the Maven output, and you can also see that uh, Surefire wrote the reports to the report directory. Afterwards, we come to the packaging phase, where the jar plugin uh, bundles our stuff into a jar file. And since there's nothing assigned to the verification phase, this is where the processing actually ends with a build success message. Nice thing is that I can do this very th same thing until every arbitrary step in the lifecycle. So for example, I can run Maven test and Maven will execute all the steps until tests, processing resources, compilation and stuff, execute the tests and then execute without the packaging. Or else I could do Maven compile and just do the respective first steps. There are actually two more life cycles in Maven that are of interest to you. The first one is the clean life cycle. The most important thing for you to remember is that clean is used to actually wipe out the target folder, that is the folder uh, containing all the compiled and generated classes, resources and whatsoever. So if you ever get to a point where a Maven build behaves strange or something, you might want to try running a Maven clean to get rid of all the previously created stuff and start from scratch. Another quite helpful thing is the Maven site lifecycle, which actually allows you to create a documentation site for your project. I will probably do an episode on Maven site generation in the near future, so for now just keep in mind that there is such a thing that allows you to create a documentation site. Last thing I want to show you today is that you can actually combine phases from different life cycles, like say clean and compile to make Maven go through both life cycles, first the clean and after that the default life cycle till the compilation phase. That's it for today, I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, drop me a comment. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. And if you have any critique or feedback, just send me a message, drop me a comment, let me know. I'm always happy to improve on your feedback. Anyways, thanks for watching, that's it for today, hope to see you next time.